I started DMing for my friend's Dungeons and Dragons group recently. We're running Lost Minds of Fendelver and just got to Thunder Tree. This video does contain minor spoilers for that campaign, so watch at your own discretion. So I happen to only have two players this session. We're trying to call a third over over FaceTime, but he just isn't picking up. One of them is a paladin named Palace, and the other is a tabaxi bard named Zen. Last session, Palace was with an elf ranger named Jimmy, and Zen was with the Goliath Barbarian, Hartrein, and the human cleric, who we call Viola Guy. He doesn't have a name, we just dub him Viola Guy since the player has not decided on a name for his character yet. The other players couldn't make it, so Zen and Palace group up. Zen is pretty much every horny bard stereotype put together into one character. The guy who plays him role plays well though, so I'm not one to complain. After all, Jimmy is played by a murder hobo who's probably tried to kill every single NPC I've set down next to them. They enter a room where six twig blights are waiting for them. Zen tries to charm one of them and fails, and then it jumps onto his face and scratches him. I moan as my reaction. Okay then. Another blight scratches Palace, who uses his turn to swipe at it with his sword. Zen then decides to try to frighten one of them, and it works. Palace then tries to cast sleep and fails. Zen uses vicious mockery. I think your tiny little Meow. penis is smaller than mine. Then he does, air quotes, squats. Two blights manage to scratch Palace, and one of them lands a critical hit on Zen's posterior as he's, you know, squatting. Then Palace, after chopping down another one of the blights, Rolls a natural one. He winds up a bit too far and nicks Zen across the left cheek with his longsword. The player for Zen specifically asked me to give Zen an edgy scar, so, you know? One man's bad roll is another one's treasure, I guess? Zen casts Thunder Wave, and that successfully clears out the room. However, there is some damage done to Palace, who didn't get out of range in time. The two of them re-enter the dragon's tower that Zen drove off last time, and he attempts to tell a story to Palace. Palace plugs his ears and casts Thaumaturgy to turn his eyes red in an attempt to get Zen to shut up. However, Pal rolls a natural one on his intimidation check, and thus, and a player for Zen asked me to do this, to have Zen become attracted to Palace. Zen slaps Pal on a tail. Pal, I love you. I make an animal handling check. Okay. And it's a one. Meow. Pal accidentally grabs Zen too close to the base of his tail in an attempt to grapple him. He then also tries to lift Zen off of himself, but fails his athletics check. So now he's stuck there with his arms awkwardly wrapped around the tabaxi's waist. Zen tries to charm Pal and fails. Seeing this, Pal runs out of the tower, casting Thaumaturgy again to slam the door behind him. Zen rips the door off its hinges and chases Pal, but is hit by a successful sleep spell. Pal returns and casts Thaumaturgy again to make his voice loud and scare Zen awake. They then wander toward the Druid's Watch, where they encounter Radoth. They ask him about the black spider mentioned in a letter they found earlier. Radoth points them towards a banshee named Agatha that may be able to help answer their question. He also allows them to stay overnight and rest. That night, Zen creeps out, picks Radoth's lock, and attempts to take his beard. Just the beard, nothing else. Like, specifically, Radoth's beard. I yank off that dude's beard. Make a sleight of hand check. 20. <sighs> Alright, I guess we're doing this. To the tabaxi's horror, there is another beard underneath the one he just took. I start twerking in Pal's face. <laughs> 